Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hot Glue and Bobby Pins, a podcast by cosplayers, for cosplayers, and anyone who wants an inside look at the lives of people who make costumes, usually attend conventions, and post about it on the internet. Sometimes we feel like we have it all together, but sometimes, especially lately, we feel like our lives are held together by hot glue and bobby pins. We invite you to experience this weird, surreal time in our lives with us. Welcome back, friends. I'm April Gloria. And I'm Oh My Sophie. As you may know, there's this little thing called a pandemic going on, and it's affecting literally everyone on this earth. So um, today we're going to be chatting about how COVID-19 has changed some things within the cosplay community. Um, And be sure to follow us on social media. Um, I'm April Gloria on basically everything, every social media you can possibly imagine, almost. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) And Sophie, you're, oh my Sophie, everywhere, right? Yep, everywhere. Two eyes, no E. Yes, no E. That's a, a sin. <laughs> a sin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, today's going to be very interesting. Um, it's weird not being in the same room as you recording. It is. We're, we're doing this remotely for the first time. And um, so hopefully it flows okay. It's a lot easier to do it when we're sitting in the same room so we can see each other's faces. But yes. we will make it work. <laughs> trying to be good, you know? Yeah. Yep. All right. So basically, if you, you know, don't know what's going on, then there's a problem there for number one. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, we're going through a pandemic on this earth for the past, um, it's been going on for a couple of months now. Yeah. And we're, I don't know, it's just a really odd time. Uh, we, I guess, I don't really know. I, it's hard to even explain What's going on? <laughs> I keep seeing the word trauma and like, I don't, I just, I've never really associated that word with myself before, you know, and I keep no. seeing people and I'm like, no, no. And then I really think about it and I'm like, no, it is a little traumatic and weird. Like everybody experiences trauma differently, of course. But for me, it's like, I just feel a little trapped, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I get that. Yeah. I know. It's, it's like one thing where I don't, I wouldn't have associated that word with this either. Cause I think especially when you're going through it, like in the moment, it's hard to put a label on it. But when you see like, when you see somebody else talking about it and you're like, wow, that's really similar to what I'm going through. It's like, oh, wow. It's like an epiphany kind of. Yeah. But yeah. So the cosplay community has, we are all going through this collectively. So we figured that we would talk about some of the ways that, um, the pandemic has changed our community, like how it's affecting it and how we're kind of adapting to get through it and continue doing what we love in a time where it's a little, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. It's certainly like kind of a social experiment for our community. Like this has never happened before. There's always been conventions to go to and meetups and, you know, uh, photography meetups, whatever it may be, but like, yeah, it's just weird not being allowed to see or like gather as a community. Yeah, it's it's odd. Um, so basically, most conventions this year have either postponed or canceled. And um, so have have all the cons that you've been gonna uh, you've been gonna. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm losing my ability to speak. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so the conventions that you were going to guest at, like, have those all been canceled or postponed for you? So it's, well, obviously, like, we were both supposed to be at Planet, and that one's in August now. Um, I, I yeah. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see, we'll see. See, that's what's weird. Like, the timeline keeps changing. So um, obviously, like, Yeti, which I was just attending, you were going to go to that, too. Yep. Um, that's canceled until next year and then my next ones like I keep pushing my dates out so it was like Tokyo and Tulsa and GalaxyCon Raleigh in July and now I'm hearing like it, well, I haven't heard from the shows that they're going to postpone or cancel but people around the shows are like discussing like oh probably postponement and it's just a little scary to think of that going out as far as July yeah so it's really it's crazy. It's, it's like we can't really figure out like I don't know what my year looks like now. I had organized it so I had so much time between conventions and when they are getting just rescheduled, they're getting rescheduled in this cluster. Yeah. And I'm a little like, afraid of how that will go. 
Yeah, same. Like, um, I was supposed to go to Emerald City, which was in March, Mm -hmm. and then Planet, which was at the end of March. And then I think I was good through May, and then June was YetiCon. And then um, Emerald City postponed, of course, because it's in Washington. Um, I was thinking about not going anyway, even if it didn't cancel, just because I didn't want to, you know, have that big of a risk. Yeah. But um, they got postponed until August, which then planets in August. And then um, Dragon Con is supposed to be the first weekend of September or something like that. So it's just like, they're just so close together. And like, I don't know, I, we'll probably get into this later, but it's like, do we really want to go right back to like a giant gathering like that? Yeah. I'm very torn about that. I look forward to us getting to discuss that because I have a lot of feels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Goodness. But so, yeah, um, I guess we talked about the the postponements. Um, yeah. So something new that we've been seeing are um, virtual conventions. Yeah. There's a lot of those popping up all over, the- which I think is really interesting. I'm curious to see if uh, they will like survive past this. Like maybe yeah. if that will be a new thing we do often as a community. Yeah. I haven't, um, I've seen, um, I guess like the social media posts about them and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's a really cool idea. Like for people who maybe can't travel, like obviously none of us can travel right now, but even um, after this, maybe people who can't uh, maybe attend a convention themselves. It seems like a cool way to kind of experience like the panel side of it. Yeah. And I definitely think it's really like, like some shows were so quick to get it together and have these ready to go. Whereas, you know, other shows it's taken them a bit longer to like figure it out. Um, And I just, I feel like obviously this is going on for quite a while and it's probably going to continue, but like those shows that have taken so long to jump on it, are they still going to see the same like interest that the shows that were ready to go did, or is it starting to like taper off? Cause I feel like there was all this excitement, like, you know, nervous excitement when this started, when people were like, yes, let's do stuff with virtual cons. Let's fill yeah. our time with all these things. And I've just noticed slowly kind of like viewer count on those type of things going down, um, which is interesting. I wonder if it has to do with like some countries and some places kind of just starting to go back out into the world. I mean, oh, you know, maybe it's hard to say. It might just be, I don't know, maybe people, because it's not a brand new thing anymore. Maybe they're just like, oh, I've kind of seen it. Maybe I don't need to see another one or whatever. It's hard to say because it could be something totally different. But, and it may just, it may also be like brand recognizability, if that's a word. I'm not really sure. But (laughs) yeah. um, I don't know. Because like Articon is obviously a really big name. So. Yeah, but and that, so that's a great example of one of the things I've seen that I think is really interesting is it appears that like um, some shows maybe like or some companies uh, may be better uh, equipped to do this like properly. It's just interesting, I guess, to see like the structure of how everyone's doing it because like GalaxyCon and Planet are doing it off of their pages. So it's their brand. And then okay. uh, like Arda has had cosplayers apply to do panels. Uh, approve the panels, but then the cosplayers do it off of their pages, and there's no connection to Arda beyond that. That's interesting. So, but oh, what? I guess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Audio problems. Oh. <laughs> but um, the Articon thing was really interesting because, like, I saw like their branding emails, like they've been sending out, or they had been sending out before it. Yeah, and it just seemed really like a cohesive event, even though the cosplayers who were putting on the panels were doing it through their own avenues like it was still all on the Arda website and they had like their schedule like clearly marked they had graphics and things like that it was really nicely done yeah I did yeah when you get on their website and that like pops up right away I just I was just interested they didn't choose to use their socials because that's how they would get the traffic yeah that's true maybe they I don't know maybe they just wanted to bring it back to the creators I don't really know yeah but if so that's really cool yeah, and seeing brand new shows pop up. So several of like the virtual shows aren't even like conventions that exist or ran by like um there's one virtual con that I think is going on this weekend. I saw Elena Strikes is a guest. Um okay. and I did some digging to look at like the convention and where it came from and it was a cosplayer who started it. 
wow. uh, kind of like TokiCon, like obviously that's supported by Midwest Esports, but like Rebecca, she spearheaded all of that. And she has a team of volunteers who are cosplayers running it. And so it's kind of, I don't know, it's like a shift in like the industry in a really interesting way. Cause like normally you think of conventions being owned by companies or individuals with plenty of money to do that. Instead yeah. of just like, like me and you right now, realistically, what is stopping us from being like, oh, okay, we're going to do April SophieCon, like 2020. Yeah. Like that is something that people have now realized like, oh, I can do this and people will get on board as long as it's marketed well. Yeah, that's cool too. Cause I could, it kind of, it's kind of nice having something that's run by somebody in the community too. Cause they, I feel like they have a good idea of what the community wants and needs and how to market towards them and things like that. Yeah. I would be really interested in like the post con feedback for the shows yeah. ran by just regular everyday people. Yeah. I think hmm. it's fascinating. What is. Yeah. Happening. And then we see a lot of like the sponsored live streams and like independent workshops. Like so many companies are getting involved. Yes. Yeah. Have I've you noticed more people like, um, reaching out to you or just cosplayers and communities in general to get them involved in these things? Um, yeah, I've had, well, I had one person reach out to me. It's not like set in stone yet. So I don't know if I can say anything publicly, but um, <laughs> there may be some sort of uh, workshop that I do. That's like maybe like a 20 minute presentation on how to make a certain thing or do a certain technique. Um, and, but I've also seen like what you did with Vero yeah, you did the uh, the live stream mask making. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I and then uh, the other things that Vero is doing are cool, too. Like I've seen a couple other um, things that they've been like sponsoring, I guess you could say. Yeah, that company is really like like a lot of companies, I think, are looking for like exposure to save them. I think they're giving to the community as well. But I think a lot of it is like, OK, we need to be present during this time. And yeah. Vero seems very like, no, we just want to give back. Like uh, when I working with them for the masks, the, there was no um, like obligations. Like they provided us funds to get materials. And then mm -hmm. beyond that, they were just like, you do you like, no, like make sure you post this many times. We want to see this on our platform. You know, it was just like, we appreciate it if you do choose to like shout us out. But beyond that, we're just want you to get this like money and the, this equipment into your communities. And I thought that was pretty cool. I know a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings about Vero. Um, yeah. But my experience with them, I, like recently working with them has been like a little mind blowing in the best way. That's interesting. Yeah, like I haven't directly worked with them at all, but like seeing the stuff that you've been doing is really cool. And it does seem like they're really trying to, you know, treat their the people they work with really well. I feel like other companies could take note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, for uh, sure. <laughs> gosh. Yeah, it just seems really, really nice that what they're doing. Well, especially right now, I feel like a lot of, um, and I get it, like right now, like, people are looking for a few more exposure books because it's not like you can go to conventions and connect with people. So people are trying to find ways to get in front of audiences. But I think this is really showing us like the caliber of companies that work with creators and cosplayers because they know they could get a lot of people for free more than ever now, because there's even less effort into it. You don't have to travel anywhere and, you know, getting costume. You're just in your house so the companies that are reaching out with paid offers, I, I find very, very like interesting. And I have a lot more respect for them during this time. Yeah. And we're going to remember that later. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will remember. <laughs> uh, we got a list. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so I guess let's kind of talk about our personal experiences, like with our income and our, I guess, social media experience since we both have multiple avenues of income across social media platforms. Yeah. Have you noticed any like changes in your Patreon subscriptions or OnlyFans since uh, all this started? So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was prepared, I think like most of us for a really heavy drop. Um, but yeah. it just so happened that, you know, around the same time the month changed the new month, uh, people started getting those stimulus checks. So, Oh, on OnlyFans, yep. I noticed some growth. Overall, this month, I'm still not on track to made, make what I made the last couple of months. I'm, I'm, a, I'm 
a percentage under that, nothing crazy, like I think like $200 under. Um, but patron is taking quite a hit and it's not just people leaving and it's, it's people like moving down to the $1 tier. And then they're sending me like apology messages. And I feel really bad because I'm like, no, like you don't need to apologize. First off, thank you for supporting me anyway. But like, you don't have to apologize for what's going on right now. Like, I'm not going to be like, I can't believe you left my $35 tier for a dollar during <laughs> a worldwide pandemic. How dare you? Right. Like, oh, it's gosh. chill. But I definitely like this month will probably be my lowest month in a year by the end of it. Yeah. Same. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. My Patreon has dropped so much. It's just, it's insane. Like, I, it's, uh. I mean, I'm now I'm glad that I have OnlyFans because I was kind of iffy on starting OnlyFans at first. I started it in January and I have actually grown a ton on OnlyFans. So like the two of them together is kind of like, I don't know, it's a little bit, it's like an income and a half, like what my Patreon was before, plus a little bit more. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thankful for that, but I know I it's- Patreon Patreon's still my, uh, my favorite platform so it's kind of sad but yeah um, I feel that way too though like patron I I you know moved my website domain name over to it and I've tried to like turn it into a mixture of a support platform and like a place that uh people can go to see like public like build blogs and announcements and stuff yeah. and now mm-hmm. I'm like the traffic t- since only fans I definitely uh have noticed less growth like people are choosing only fans over patron yeah but like and except for the people who care about like crafting and stuff yes. those people s- will care about patreon they're usually in like the lower tiers or whatever but everybody else seems to only want to do only fans which is very interesting to watch <laughs> yeah that's another evolution of our industry that i think should be like a totally separate episode just talking about all these paid platforms yes i agree for That'd sure really, what really about cool to- to do that but yeah hmm? what, what about, are we gonna say oh Sorry. i'm just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> you're good what about like sponsorships like have you noticed that you're getting more than usual or just accepting more than usual like companies reaching out to you for influencership or whatever um i have not actually i haven't had anybody reach out to me lately um not not in regard to paid stuff that is and i i really can't like especially now i cannot take anything that is not like paid like I need income (laughs) yeah so the the audacity of companies reaching out for free (laughs) a free push right now (laughs) like come on bro I definitely it's kind of the same here like I did um I was fortunate enough to be contacted for con artist magazine for their one uh but outside of that I haven't really seen a whole lot of like I've and I haven't really seen a lot of cosplayers influencing at this time like uh yeah the people I see who normally do get like deal after deal and you can you can tell they're pretty like you know almost like working full-time influencing for companies I've just noticed a bit less of that and I wonder if that has to do with companies just kind of like feeling the ground or they don't have the money for influencers right now. I kind of feel like now is the time, like now is the most powerful time to be paying those influencers. Yeah. Um, I agree. Like we're all home. We're all like watching more YouTube or whatever. Um, yeah. I've seen a couple, I've seen a couple cosplayers pick up some sponsorships or whatever, but um, I guess nothing super crazy or anything like that. Like, I think it's great that um, they have ways to get income during this time. Cause I know like during a time like this, you kind of want more sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll just take what you can get right now. April and I are open for sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. If it if it, me- if it mixes with our brand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like. Yeah. I. Yeah. I'm just really. I. I wish that. Um, so what? Here's what I was gonna say is I have had a couple of uh, like phone game companies email me, but they want to pay me ten cents per click. Oh, geez. <laughs> Which is not, and they're like, this will really help during this time. And then I have emailed them back and been like, you know, very reasonable, even been like, you know, I'll do uh, like 30 second ad for uh, 150, 200 bucks. And then they never email me back. And I'm oh like, my I am lowballing myself so much on this. Yeah, that like, is really low. <laughs> like, oh man. Just nope. I get, who, 10 cents per click. Come on, man. Even outside of pandemic times, that's not acceptable. <laughs> no. Oh man. Um, what about your uh, Twitch or uh, YouTube viewership? Has that increased or decreased? 
Um, I'm really Twitch. I'm so inconsistent. I don't really know if uh, that's a good like uh, measure. So I have been streaming more since all of this happened. And at first it was growing pretty good. And mm -hmm. every time I stream, there's still like new followers coming in, but I have noticed that the views have gone down a little bit. And I think that's because of the saturation on Twitch. So okay, I was yeah. talking to a few different people who have spent this time making the jump to mixer or caffeine. And they said that that was way more impactful for them just because there's like any time I get on Twitch, like I've tried different times I've streamed in the day and in the evening, I'm going to try a late night stream later, like, or next week. And it's just like, anytime I get on, there's a thousand other people that I follow on at that same time. And I know we share a lot of audience. Yeah. So like you get people who like pop in for a few minutes just to be like, hey, just wanted to say hi, I'm hopping streams. Um, so I, I maybe other people have different experiences, but for me, it's like not great, but not terrible. Um, right. YouTube, I think, is growing slowly because I've been more consistent. I haven't noticed an impact for me like during this time. Like I wouldn't say like I'm blowing up because of all of this. Like it's just growing at the steady pace it was. It's good. Well, at least it's growing. <laughs> yeah. I, I have seen that supposedly like Twitch viewership is off up across the board, but I, I just think that so many people, like so many people I know who never streamed before have started streaming. Yeah. And then you've got like a uh, Momokun and Phil Mizuno who'd never, who, who just started doing regular streams. So their fans, you know, obviously that crosses over a lot into our fans and they're so excited that that's where they are. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of that too. Yeah. And then the people that are established, they have thousands or millions of followers and more of them are online. So yeah. they're probably going to spend their time to watch those people. So who is it? Little. Um, oh, my gosh. It's like little Shia or something. Her. Yeah. And, oh, the dancer. Yeah. Her and yeah, Amber. Yeah. They're like the amount of people in their streams. Every time I look is astounding. Like wow. their communities are so like invested and I've seen it like double during this time on there. So they're probably super killing it right now. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, sweet. Okay. So I guess um, let's talk about like our social social media social media our favorite thing oh god <laughs> best friend worst enemy uh, <laughs> um have you found any like changing patterns in your growth on other social media platforms like instagram facebook i know facebook's doing a thing right now yeah with some people facebook's like boom it's slowing down now though so is that initial boom where like fifty thousand new people came in and now yeah. it's like 15 or 20 a day. So clearly I've been moved out of the like uh, suggested, you know, being like in the suggested as often. But that yeah. either way, that was pretty cool. I'm happy with that platform. Instagram, like oh my I, gosh. you and I <laughs> talked about this before the podcast, but since I don't have conventions to look forward to and drive towards, my brain has clicked back into connecting my self-worth to those numbers. And I keep trying to tell myself, like, I should just be happy for what's happening with Facebook. That, like, that, that should be good enough for me. And I shouldn't be greedy. But then I see, like, my Instagram, like, at a screeching halt for mm -hmm. two weeks. And my self-worth is just wrapped so tightly in that that I keep, like, spiraling into these pits that I have not been to for years. Yeah. What about you? It's, it's hard. Uh well, so I I was not part of the Facebook boom, and it was kind of like I know numbers are are numbers or whatever, but it did kind of mess with me a little bit, like wondering yeah. why mine wasn't wasn't growing. But then I was like, okay, it's just not popping up in the suggested, so that was kind of like that took care of that. But Instagram is I'm like losing people now. Like I have a net of like negative like fifty a day or. 200 a day or something like that yeah same just really odd it's so annoying like i like i know i should be thankful like oh i have like a, a decent audience or whatever but it still sucks to see it go down for no reason well yeah it's like you think during this time growth would be just exponential across the board yeah. because there's more people online and it does seem like Instagram's like working. Like the other day I had uh, some, I was shared to some story and almost instantly got like 60 new followers. And I was like, awesome. Okay. We're moving again. Within 24 yeah. hours, I had lost all of those followers. Oh my gosh. So I went, I've, I've signed up for Skillshare recently to just enhance my like social media prowess. Um, and yeah. 
I was watching a video on like how the algorithms have updated. So now they don't just remove inactive profiles or profiles that haven't engaged with you in a couple of months. In some cases, they'll remove profiles they just don't think are a right fit for your content. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Which is lunacy. Like, I don't know what Instagram wants from us. (laughs) Like... Yeah, like I follow accounts that are super different from me. Like I'll follow them because they're so different and I'm really interested. Yeah. And like it would be so annoying if Instagram removed me for like not seeming like the right audience for somebody. Yeah. Like how who are they to make that decision? Especially during like, yeah, like I said, like a time like this. Like you right. would think they would – I think Facebook – and obviously I don't know if this was their uh, uh, driving point – but I think that uh, loosening the algorithms a little bit and allowing for more suggested while everyone hasn't had a turn in the suggested um, place yet, which I did uh, speak to some people yesterday. So as I've noticed mine trickling down, other people have started noticing it coming in for them. So I feel like they're trying to be relatively fair. Um, and I think that was a really clever move on their point to kind of open up those algorithms And I don't understand why they wouldn't have done the same with Instagram. Why not allow for more content to reach audiences during, because I don't know about, um, I guess, everyone in the whole world, but a lot of people I've spoke to have noticed the same as me. My reach is also way down. Like, I am super lucky to hit a thousand likes on a post now when for a while I was sitting at two, three thousand for weeks consecutively. Yeah, same. Yeah. I'll have a couple like if I post too close together then my reach just plummets or if it's not like a close-up of my face yeah (laughs) or whatever I don't know it just depends like I did a a post about D&D and I knew it was gonna tank but it was like from items that have been sponsored to me so I had to make a post about it but it sucks when I know that it's just gonna tank yeah I didn't want to just have my face holding up a book be like hi look here's the thing like I wanted it to be a nice looking post that had some meaning to it yeah but it's annoying when you know that it's gonna get like 500 likes out of your like hundreds of like just big audience compared to the amount of people that are actually seeing it yeah it's and especially when it's company like you Instagram claims they want this really nice curated engaging content especially right now because more people are online well, you curate those posts so well, and then they kill them. Yep. Like, it's madness. You can actually, and, and I would be interested, like, of our listeners, if they have experienced this, but where, like, you'll you'll post a post, and it'll, like, take off for a few minutes, like, it's just killing it, and then it's screeching halt for about two minutes, and then they slowly trickle back in. It's literally like the algorithm goes, stop, hold on, and then they'll, do you see that on yours? Um, it depends. Like, I don't always, I don't always look at it like right after I post it. Like yeah. sometimes I'll wait 15 minutes to go check on it. But then, um, I have noticed sometimes it'll do okay. And then like the next day it'll pick up numbers again. Hmm. It's really odd. And then it'll continue for like a couple of days, not like anything crazy, but people will still be liking it. And then after a couple of days, then I don't get any likes on it. And that's when I kind of figure I can post something else. Yeah. So if I post too soon, then it just gets angry with me, I guess. Yeah. You would think they would want people posting every day right now. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I would like to because I have a lot of stuff that I want to post, but it's just, it sucks not being able to post any of it. Yeah. I've kind of decided that I'm just going to, like I posted the last two days in a row and that's probably why things aren't doing well. But for my own mental health, I'm just going to post as I want and just whatever happens, happens. And if that means that companies will look past me and look at that and go, oh, I'm not working with her. Then I don't want to work with those companies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I know. Like it sucks when a company wants your, I mean, it makes sense because they want their stuff to reach people, but it sucks when they only go off of like a couple story impressions and they're like, wow, your reach isn't high enough. We're not even going to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like, don't know. That's madness. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons during this time I've taken the time to start doing that social media series on YouTube because I really – I've seen a lot of mental health posts, people like attaching their self-worth to their numbers during this time because they don't have like uh, any other, you know, I guess milestones to hit. Like you can't go to shows. You don't have this. So that's just where your brain is redirecting if you are like building a brand or invested in that. And so that's why I started doing those videos because I was like maybe I can help a bit and also me talking about it 
kind of like talking to myself about it helps reground me. Like, hey, this isn't yeah. you. This is just the way things are. And right now that's amplified. Yep, you got to manifest it. Yes, manifest. So what about like changes in crafting for you? Do you feel like you're hyper motivated to make a thousand cosplays or do you <laughs> want to hide in a cave? Oh yeah, I've made five costumes today already. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So that's kind of like what I thought would happen when we were first like realizing that we were going to need to stay home and quarantine ourselves or whatever. Um, I'm like, wow, I'll have so much time. I can make everything that I want to make that I can think of. I mean, (laughs) granted, I can get supplies, but um, that's definitely not happened at all. (laughs) same days i went as uh, like when they were announcing that they were going to close things down here i like rushed to joanne's and got stuff i needed for like three different cosplays and i was like man there's only like three days left on soren and then i'm gonna make a cosplay a week and but no i finished soren yesterday what are we six weeks in now <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> so yeah no that didn't happen for me um Moving forward, I am determined to like try a little bit harder because I did realize that like um, kind of going back to that trauma thing, like I was ignoring how I was feeling about all of this um, yeah. and just trying to work through it. And that wasn't working. I wasn't able to like do that. So. Yep. Same. Like I have that uh, Keyleth costume from Critical Role that I was going to definitely get done in, I don't know when, like very soon after I said that (laughs) and uh, I'm going to have to remake it because I, I was going strong for a while until I got to a part where the sewing was difficult and I did a horrible job on it. And so I was, (laughs) yeah, those, uh, those triangle shapes that I showed you, they looked horrendous. So I'm going to have to redo that, but I like, didn't really feel like I had the energy to redo it because I have the fabric and stuff, but I was just, I just couldn't, do it for some reason and uh i don't know so i did a smaller project because in our back fields the uh people the farmers burn the fields to like make room for new growth um and it keeps it everything healthy out there but they burn like the entire field and so it's all smoky and black and ashy and stuff and I had an idea to make the starter outfit that you wear in Skyrim when you're a prisoner and the dragon attacks the the town and you're yes. all like in flames or whatever. Um, so I'm like, oh, that'd be an excuse to make another, yet another Skyrim outfit. And <laughs> never too many. <laughs> yet a- <laughs> I know. And another excuse to make an outfit that's uh, distressed. And that's like, something that I know I can do and I wanted something that was easy after the Keyleth disaster. So I did that and it was, it. I was like, I could get that done in three days and it's been like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like a mental I block. Do you, do you see that as well? It's like as if like your brain cannot get motivated. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no end to time and space anymore. <laughs> None of it means no, anything. No, there isn't. <laughs> I think we're in the twilight zone right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. What did I put on my status earlier? It's Fry Adder Day. Like, I don't. Right. I don't know, man. And it's like, yeah. I have, I think a lot, I've seen a lot of that online. Like, and I certainly was the same way when this first started. I was like, man, I am going to get so much done when conventions start. I'm going to have a thousand new cosplays. My craftsmanship yep. is going to be toppest tier. Here. here I come, kill it. Six weeks in. I don't know what I've done for six weeks. I don't, I keep no. saying six weeks. I don't even know if it's six weeks. Yeah. Same here. You know like, what I, I? I don't know. Hmm? Oh, I was gonna say what I have done I, is I was just gonna say ordered a lot of wigs for costumes I want oh, to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've ordered some wigs too. I ordered some stuff to make um, an Animal Crossing costume, but the uh, the fabric won't be here for a really long time because Spoonflower is it just it's a good reason because they're doing uh, like mask making efforts and things like that. Yeah, but um. So I'll have to wait long for that anyway. But I'm just like, oh, I'll have plenty of time to make her ears and style the wig or whatever. Um, so we'll see. I, after I finish the Skyrim outfit, maybe I'll I'll try making ears or something. I don't know. I think that this highlights like even, you know, those of us who are like, like I'm pretty extroverted. 
I know. Would you consider yourself an introvert or on the board? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a a classic introvert. (laughs) I think when I first met you, I saw it, but now I just don't. Like, well, uh, I think, like, because introvert, like, basically what that means is you just, you need time alone to recharge. Being being around people makes you tired, like, mentally. Um, It's different. It's different from shyness and different from quietness, which I can be shy at first, but um, I think it's just, uh, the way that I recharge. Yeah. Like I recharge with people. So this, right. Become... So that makes you a, a classic extrovert. <sighs> I'm like, I know <laughs> Casey's had struggles too. I didn't think I thought it'd still be fine. Cause I was like, we have the internet now. I'm like, no, there's something special about being around people. Like for yeah. me at least, but the, what I was getting to, I think that regardless of extrovert introvert, like as a community, in general, this whole thing has made a lot of people realize that a lot of their motivation comes from getting to be around their fellow costumers and creators and getting to share like ideas and just be together in person. You know, yep. like that, I, I think that's been highlighted. Certainly for me, I mean, I've seen other people's statuses, but speaking from my experience, I realized that when I do conventions, that's like a supercharge and I come back and I'm ready to power into my next costume. And then I finish that costume because I've got another convention to look forward to. So there's a beginning, you know, there, there's like a, there's a goalpost, there's a start right. and there's an end. And now I don't have any of that. And so I like a lost little panda in my cosplay room. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I think I can, I mean, conventions, when I'm at conventions, I'm just all for hanging out with people. I do have limits. Like once I reach that limit, I'm absolutely done. (laughs) But um, it does like not being able to go to some of the conventions I had planned is is sad because I was going to get to see people that I either haven't met in person yet, have only seen once or only get to see like a couple times a year. Yeah. And so like having that. And I know there's bigger problems in the world, obviously. But um, it is still sad when you, ex- like, I don't know, it's when you go through something like that. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, like, I agree. Like, obviously, there are, like, bigger things, but you're still 100% entitled to, like, be bummed out about that. You know what I mean? Like, everyone yep. feels, like, I feel bad about when I'm, like, complaining just that, like, oh, I can't, like, go see, like, you or any of the rest of the squad. And, like, oh, that repowers me without that. I feel depressed. And I feel like that sounds like frivolous but to me in my experience it's not you know that's how I operate and that has been taken away from me and that's why that whole like trauma thing I was like oh I see it now there it is so what are some things that you've been kind of having to adapt to or like some solutions that you've come to um I guess put together to uh deal with all of this (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that I think this is something we're all dabbling back into is like self shooting. I'd stopped self shooting for a long time, but and now I've been gathering supplies to like hop back into that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been focusing a lot on getting my YouTube and like streaming up as best I can. Um, what else? I haven't really done like uh, I don't know. I think that's all I've really like. It sucks not being able to. Not that like obviously like this is going on. It's okay, but. It just sucks not being able to like go and get the supplies you need. And I feel bad about ordering things because like there are essential workers who have to send those right. things to you. I mean, there's some things I just, I have to order to keep my like business afloat. Um, but there's a lot of guilt attached to that, which is really strange as well. So kind of adapting to that and not just like clicking and buying things instead having to like think about it and be like, how do I feel about this? Uh, that's a few yeah. things that have really like circled around me. What about you? Um, similar stuff. Like I do kind of think about the online orders. Like I try to order like in bulk instead of just like, I'll order one thing. And then a day later, Oh, I need this other thing. And then order that one little tiny thing. And I also, another thing that's had to change for us is, um, thinking about our recycling because our recycling facility is closed (laughs) and there's only one, there's like that one in that, in our town, um, the one nearest to us closed last year. And then the one that we usually take things to, like the last time we tried to go, it was closed, but with no signs or anything. So I have to think about like how much packaging I'm going to be bringing into the house. And because yeah. uh, things come in just huge boxes, even if you don't, even if they don't need it. So I've had to try and order in bulk when I can, um, especially wigs. I have ordered multiple wigs. I know. I think Arden's <laughs> getting paid right now. 
Oh yeah, totally. Yep. They got me. <laughs> yeah. They got me a midnight last night. I ordered two more. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I need, and then I, they have a new Raven wig and I was, it's like $90 though. And I was like, I can't justify that. I need to like slow my roll a lot. <laughs> Got to wait, wait till you need a couple more. Yeah. Then, yeah. That's then true. do it all at once. It's like ripping the bandaid off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I need to order a Vex wig too. I need to do oh, that. Yes, yes. See, there we go. There's two. <laughs> Perfect. What about are you I'm getting sure. like super resourceful with content? Have you been doing more self shooting? Um, I actually I've done selfie sets for OnlyFans, which go over really well. Um, Casey, my husband, for those of you who don't know, he and I do a lot of our sh- our shoots together. So we actually haven't really shot anything, which is really odd. Like, and I think it's I have to kind of uh, think about. Um, I guess where I want to shoot things extra hard because usually it's like, Oh, we could just go th- to this place. Cause we do a lot of travel location shoots mm-hmm. and we can't really do a lot of that right now unless we find a park that's abandoned, I guess. And it's hard to know whether that's actually going to be abandoned or if people are just going to be all thinking the same thing. So yeah, most um, of the parks in town have been pretty full, which is concerning, but I yeah. Oh my gosh. So I don't know. It's hard for me. I'm also like a huge perfectionist. So I have to like I have certain visions for certain costumes. So I will seriously wait like a year before shooting something if I don't like the options that I have for shooting it. Yeah. Which I should probably learn to just suck it up and try to make it work. I do respect that about you, though. Like, I I definitely respect that level of like perfectionist and like dedication to the costume. Thanks. I mean, I... I'm always happy with the outcome when I do that. So it's, it kind of rewards me for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's but what- I, I have, I've gotten a couple ideas, so we'll see. For like other places. Yeah. For like stuff that I can shoot in the backyard now that things are greening up a little bit. Like I, I'm getting a couple ideas, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> this was going to be the year that I um, did less conventions and more traveling for collabs. And I just feel like <laughs> that no, plan. You, you can't do either. <laughs> no, can't do any of it. It's just so crazy how that happened. Like at the beginning of the year, I was like, yes. Cause like we were going to go see Taylor Swift and I was thinking yep. like, we should find some locations in LA to do some shoots, meet up with some people, maybe do some collabs if we have time. Nope. Yeah. No, none of that. Yeah. None we were going to go to Canada yeah uh, <laughs> where else i don't know just anywhere i like but, on the subject of that canada one so my flights were to indiana to go uh to ride up with termina to canada but now I, i'm not going to get those money that money back because it's domestic so like do i go to indiana is that not okay you know what it's june like i don't know whether i pursue a refund or whether i'm like okay things will be good by then to go i just Everything is so hard. confusing. Yeah. Which you know that I'm a person who likes to plan everything within an inch of my life. Yeah. So <laughs> like not being able to plan anything is just, it makes me just not want to plan anything at all. Yeah. Like it makes me just want to give up and not even try. I kind of <laughs> honestly, like I, I can, I think sympathize with you on that a bit more now. Cause I like now I normally I'm pretty like, whatever, we'll just figure it out. But now I'm very much like, whatever, I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Nothing means anything. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. I <laughs> can't do it. Um, uh, yeah, some other stuff that I'm like meaning to do, I guess. Like, I kind of want to do more like makeup tests. And I've seen people do challenges where they create an outfit with supplies they already have, which I yeah. have like five outfits like that that I haven't finished. So, but it's a cool challenge. Like, if you're all caught up um, and stuff. And then I kind of want to learn something new that's not costuming. Like maybe sometimes I feel like I just need a break from cosplay. Yeah. Even though I'm not, I'm not completing any projects and I feel, I feel good when I work on stuff, but I feel like I just need something else to do. So I got like one of those flower, it's like a flower press device where you put a flower between the two plates, you put it in the microwave and it does like a press dried flower. Yeah. So I kind of want to try doing that with all the flowers like in our field and stuff when they come up just for something, something new, something to kind of redirect your brain away from it. Yeah. I mean, Animal Crossing has been doing that very well lately, but I can't play that 
too much or else like I'll get headaches and stuff. So yeah, it's not, it's not good, but I, it's I, a lot of fun when I do play it. I really still want to buy it, but I keep like telling myself like, no, you don't need it. You're not going to play it, but maybe I would, maybe I just need to I do think, it. I think you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. Your Island. Oh my gosh. You, you should get it so you can come see me. And then if you have questions, I can tell you about, about things, I guess, <laughs> over the internet be my tour guide <laughs> yes yeah, I, definitely, I highly recommend it i definitely want it i think i'm just gonna do the thing um on the subject yeah. of new skills during this time i keep telling my so i bought a week from arda for pain you know from final fantasy she has that crazy like swoop and i yes. told myself i was gonna conquer wig styling so i have all different cool wig books including uh, a <gasps> cow book crunchies extreme wig styling book and i have uh, one from kimpatsu and man, mm. I have not even started yet. Like it's so daunting, <laughs> <laughs> but that's my oh, goal. No. I just want to style one wig and be like, you know, it, in a way that's like more advanced than what I normally do. Like I can cut some bangs and maybe some layers, but beyond yeah. that, it's pretty, it's not really something I've dabbled in. So I want to do that. That's an interesting though. I like that you said about uh, a hobby outside of costuming. That's not something I ever think about. I think that's not good. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I know a lot of a lot of cosplayers. That's like all that's on their brain is cosplay, which is fine. I just I yeah. don't know why I have to like separate myself. Like I just feel like I I'm happiest when I can do a variety of things. Yeah. So I've been doing some like before all this happened. Casey and I got some wood and we made some flower beds for my window wells down in the basement. Yeah. So. And I want to do like a butterfly garden and things like that. So having something like that to like take my mind off of it, it helps me go back to cosplay with a clearer head in a way. Yeah. So I've been enjoying it. That's a good idea. So, yeah. Um, I think so myself. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Except not just kidding. Uh, so I know that you've been making masks with uh, Vero. Like, have you made... Like a bunch of, have you done that a couple times or just once or is it like an ongoing thing? So it's an ongoing thing. I think so far um, I've gotten out just about 200 masks. Um, oh, wow. To like individuals and businesses and that like um, one of them was uh, in town. It's basically like uh, the CPS, like they look after the foster children and help get people like your kids back to their families and stuff. So obviously like all the bad stuff in the world outside of this is still going on. So they still have all these kids coming in and they have to go check on their homes. Like they can't stop doing this. And so uh, yeah. they had like no PPE cause no one really thinks about places like that needing it. So I did provide a bunch to them through actually Nikki, our friend, Nikki's um, Daisy designs, go check out her artwork. She draws animals, yes. um, <laughs> her, but through her mom, <laughs> her mom works in that industry. And so uh, I have more, I'm, I guess I'm just going to keep making them until we don't need them anymore. A friend's mom also donated to me like 200 crown Royal bags. Apparently they're oh, great nice. for making masks. So wow. I haven't, yeah, I, I don't really know how that works yet, but um, after I finish the red ones I'm working on now, I'm going to dabble in those. Um, like I said, Vero had no expectations of us. They just wanted us to do good things, but um, I, I, I've, it's been how I need to stream more anyway. So streaming a couple of times, I've done two stream masks so far. I'll probably do like two or three more over the next month. Um, just to show them appreciation and it's content for my stream, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I did. So speaking of mask making, just hopping on that subject entirely real quick. Have you like for me at first, like figuring out that accordion style was so annoying. <laughs> like, oh I don't know gosh. why, because it's I right. <laughs> I agree. I had a lot of trouble, like because the I was following the pattern where they have uh, two layers and then like so you could put the filter in the pocket. Yeah, and I like I don't understand why I have such a hard time folding them. Yeah, no, me too. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And then while I was making them, my whole like sewing machine died. So. For a minute, like the first week of making masks, everything that could go wrong did. And I was, and I couldn't, like the pattern was for whatever reason, I just couldn't get the folding like you. And yeah. I just was like, I'm like cursed. Like I'm trying to do charitable work <laughs> and I'm doomed right. and I'm never doing charity again. <laughs> 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 I hate it. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
That sucks. But I figured yeah. it out now. Well, I think I'm going to roll. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, many are you got, planning to make? Got, Oh, uh, probably the same as you. I'll just keep going. I bought a bunch of fabric um, a couple or a couple weeks ago, I guess, and I'm just kind of solidifying the pattern or whatever. And then I'm going to start giving them out when I feel like they're good enough quality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my first but, few I threw away <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm going to keep probably the first couple, <laughs> just like to have around the house or whatever, because I need them anyway. So yeah, we'll just. Keep going, I guess, until we don't need any more. I guess. Uh, whenever that is. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we don't need them within a couple months. But you never know. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why, like, everything we've talked about, like, it's just so important to be able to, like, adapt to, yep. like, our industry and our everything to what's going on. Like, this has proven to me, and people have said that to me before, like, it's important when you're online to be able to adapt to changes. Like, I, I understood that, but I think this is the first time most of us are having to practice that. Yes. Yep. Because everything is just being kind of forcibly changed around us. Yeah. So we have to, we either have to figure out how to keep going and keep doing what we're doing or just not and fall to the wayside. Yeah. And that's like, honestly, like that falls into my mental health too. If I'm speaking super candidly and honestly, like without having like my shows where I have a physical presence with the communities and stuff, my worst fear is like coming out of this and having lost everything I've built. Mm. Like, I don't think that that will, like, I don't think that that will happen, but that is like something that's like seeping into my head. Like what if this lasts say all year, what if they cancel all shows for 2020? Like they have in places like Australia and mm -hmm. what if I can't keep up the momentum and when 2021 starts, like, it's done for me. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that I could see. I could see how those thoughts would worm their way in there. Yeah. Ugh. Goodness. Well, okay. So I guess now let's talk about uh, – we'll come back to the mental health um, after this probably and talk about it in more detail because there's a lot of things going on in our brains. Oh, yes. <laughs> But uh, let's talk about like the community, like the cosplay community itself, because I feel like it's been a little weird in the community yeah. lately. Like it was, I feel like it was better at first in some ways, but now it's just a little bit more divisive in a way. I in some areas, a hundred percent agree. Like in the beginning, it appeared like brief overview that like the community was coming together and this was going to be a very positive thing for us. And I'm just kind of like noticing like people are, I think just getting fed up of being stuck at home and, you know, mental health things are kicking in. People are starting to realize like this is ongoing. And I think they're starting to take that out on their fellow community members. Yeah. Which is not, not right. No, but it's like, it sucks seeing it happen. And it sucks. Like if you think that you might've triggered someone's temper or something like that. Yeah. Without meaning to, and I don't know, there's just people that are maybe instigating more or just they're just bored, I guess. Well, it's also wanting. really showing kind of like true colors of some people in our community because like uh, some people are finding ways to use like the this pandemic that's going on. To, I mean, like, and I'm all for people like you do you, you evolve your brand, get it. But some of the ways yep. that people are using this virus to boost themselves like is incredibly concerning. Like Yeah, like if they're doing I don't know, like I don't know, they just put things out that seem like negative, but like they're also it's hard to explain. Chan. Oh, yeah, Corona Chan. Like <laughs> so, for those who aren't familiar, Corona Chan is so the Chan, I guess you could probably explain the the Chan thing because you're more into the into that kind of thing it's just like personified they so like the the like chan trend online is like like earth chan and all the planets chan galaxy chan is just like um anime versions of inanimate things i guess i don't, okay. I don't know if the earth would be considered okay. inanimate but like, <laughs> like you could do, kind of yeah like i could be chair chan if i really wanted okay. <laughs> and dress up <laughs> as a sexy little schoolgirl chair or something <laughs> But, uh, uh, do it. <laughs> you should tell me. That's what I'm gonna do. Make up chans from stuff in this room. Oh my lamp gosh, chan. lamp, lamp chan. Lamp chan. <laughs> I will be table chan if you'll be lamp chan. I'll do it. Wear a lampshade on my head. Yes. Perfect. 
just every ounce of highlighter I own on my face. Yeah, and a, just a schoolgirl <laughs> skirt and some thigh highs. That's it. That's the whole oh costume. <laughs> yep, that's it. I've been to it. Um, yeah. But- Corona Chan, it, it was like based off of a fan art that somebody did of a girl in a uh, chi pao, which is a Chinese um, dress, which forgive my pronunciation, very white. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it better than I um, could have. I appreciate your effort. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did look it up beforehand on the internet. Cause I didn't want to get it wrong, but um, there she's dressed in a chi pao. She's a uh, um, Asian uh, looking girl. And she has buns on the side of her head that look like viruses. And I think she's wearing a mask. I don't know. I'm not looking at it right now because I don't want to look it up. <laughs> but um, a girl or I've seen a couple people either drawing it or cosplaying it. One of them even had like it was supposed to be this thing where it was like, let me infect you or something like that. And I'm just like, that is so incredibly distasteful yeah and i felt bad for feel like i i did because okay how do you feel do you think the artwork is also distasteful or just people cosplaying it i don't know i kind of feel like both because yeah. it's not like it's a subject that's really serious and maybe maybe back then people were like they didn't think it was serious like i know some people still don't think it's serious but you know yeah back then maybe more people didn't but it's still like distasteful and like rude to people who are from china and it's just not a nice thing to do i think that's like a lot of people because i know one of the and i don't know i can't recall if this was the girl that like blew up and got like first off you also shouldn't be sending death threats to this girl just a sidebar it doesn't matter well yeah like that's (laughs) too far you can cancel her but you can't threaten to kill her. like no please Um, yeah that's (laughs) <laughs> but I think I think uh, if it was her, whoever it was, I think there were good, like, they thought they had good intentions because they, like, did that video, like, make sure you wash your hands and you do this. But I think people miss the the xenophobic issue. Like, the issue isn't that you cosplayed a virus. It's right. all of the, I mean, yeah, that too, a little bit in my mind. But the, it's it's weird, yeah. <laughs> the Asian connotation I like the racism yeah. xenophobia that is attached to that like that is the issue no one was Agreed. like attacking you for raising awareness they were jumping on you because it was an uncomfortable stereotype right and because like asian people have had situations since then where they've experienced people being extremely racist towards them yeah just for being asian so it's i don't know it's just super just bad it's just a bad form rude like thing to do it's not good don't do it <laughs> i just wish people would like i like cosplay yeah it's your art and you it's your art form you should be able to cosplay for the most part whatever you want or whatever but i just think like not enough thought goes into things sometimes people just go oh that's cute i'm gonna be that right now and then right like but did you really look at the design and think about the meaning behind it because this isn't the first time we've seen like a cosplay that has racist connotations happening. No, it's seen way too often. I, like it's 2020. We shouldn't, we should be over this by now, but unfortunately people are not. No. <laughs> Blows like <my> over. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like you shouldn't be like, people should know better yeah. than to cosplay something like that. Yeah. What do you think about then, toilet paper Chan? Oh yeah. The toilet paper Chan. I think that if you're going to do, a a chan related to the virus then that is probably a better way to go yeah (laughs) like it's super goofy super silly and it's not like hurting anybody and it's it kind of plays off the joke that like there's no toilet paper or whatever like it's just kind of silly and fun without hurting anybody yeah so i think if you can think of a way to make like a silly fun costume based around this but not make it racist. <laughs> yeah. Then go for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I agree. I just, f- while I super agree with that, like I saw some of the toilet paper chants and they were really cute. And I was like thinking about it and I was like, I just, I'm, 
I just don't want to have any posts where I'm using like hashtag coronavirus. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Like, I'm scared yeah. to look like I would never want people to think I was trying to profit off of a very awful situation. So even some of those, I'm like, you do you, you have fun. Like I'm not judging you for it, but for me, it makes me a little uncomfortable, like across the board. Well, yeah, like I would not, um, I probably wouldn't do it as like a Patreon exclusive set or whatever. I would, yeah. I just wouldn't want to make extra money off of it. Yeah. Like I would, it would feel weird doing that. Like mm. I think people that do it are just basically doing it like for fun, like yeah. those kind of things. But yeah, uh, toilet paper, Chan beats uh corona chan yes oh my gosh <laughs> as far as offensiveness goes just do random object chans there's a thousand right. of them <laughs> let's see what can i see a book near me book chan book chan Chapstick. i'll be bookmark chan <laughs> chapstick chan i see a pair of binoculars they're for bird watching we're not creeps <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, gosh yeah but computer chan yeah, perfect. It was the future of cosplay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can never go outside anymore. Exactly. Oh, well, goodness. All right. So we've, I, th- I feel like we've talked enough about like negative crap yes. that's been going on. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some cool things that we've been seeing from people. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people on my friends list and a lot of people on like Twitter and stuff making like tons and tons of masks for people. I've been seeing people making, um, I have a friend who's making gowns for people and another friend who's making like the little caps with the buttons to hold the masks on. Yeah, And then tons of people are also making masks, which is really awesome. I um, am super impressed with uh, Timothy HDC uh, Fabrications. He's working Mm -hmm. with, uh, he's also working with Vero, but he is working with Hero Solutions to make face shields, and they have the university involved. Like, how cool! Uh, and then uh, that's awesome. Monica from Geeks of Gogo was just featured in the New Yorker for her mask making efforts. And I know Jackie Chan or Jackie Chan, <laughs> Jackie <laughs> Craft. <laughs> that's your new name, Jackie. <laughs> oh God, it's too many co- sure. Corona Chan. <laughs> oh my God, Jackie Craft. Um, <laughs> on where she lives, she was like made the front page for bringing people together to make masks for her community, and uh, they came and like covered it. And if you watch her Instagram story, like every day she is on it one thousand percent. And I just, it's so cool to see people coming together and doing this. Like. Yeah, I think this is highlighted. At least, I've always believed that people are like inherently good and that, you know, even people who do bad things, it usually comes from like something that happened to them, whatever, you know, there's a reason that isn't just they're a bad person. And for me, this whole situation has really like highlighted how much good are in our communities, not even just cosplay, but like in general, people don't want other people to be uncomfortable or in pain. And I love that. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool seeing the contrast between like the people who are like blowing up on Twitter and then seeing other people who are using their time for good, making like hundreds of masks. Like isn't, um, didn't Cheeky Cheetah cosplay make like 600 masks so far or something crazy? Like, yeah, it's super awesome. I think, uh, and- Jackie too, like, like within that number as well, both of them are like making like the most masks I've seen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's super cool. Like I'm, it's nice seeing people that like, in a way, coming together. Like part of the community is coming together. Yeah, which is it's just really nice. I see a lot of um, like streamers doing donations. Like I have a donation goal on mine, and I have it set saying like every penny will go towards COVID relief, and it may not be a lot, but even like you know five ten bucks, I feel like helps. But I see some streamers who are able to raise like thousands. Who there was a streamer and I can't for the life of me. I know it wasn't. I don't think it was Ninja. It might have been, but one of like the big big streamers raised like millions of dollars in twenty four hours. Holy smokes! That's crazy. I will have to awesome find out who that is. But yeah, it's cool seeing even people like obviously people outside our community like just donating massive amounts of money or I don't know doing other things to help. A lot of like uh, celebrities have really come together and donated like a ton of money or just gotten involved, which I think is very cool. Um, Yeah. And they're all donating the money, which 
I think it was uh, Jack Septicai. He raised six hundred and sixty thousand dollars in twelve hours. He's another one. Wow, um, but, that's that's great. Like it just proves that, like, as like the human race, like we can come together and get things done if we need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it gets done soon. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's my pessimism coming through sometimes. No, <laughs> like, I feel that though. Ah. Like but, I went from this will be chill to can this be done now? <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like before all this stuff happened, Casey and I were talking. We're like, man, it might be nice to have a couple days of quarantine where we can just get house projects done. And now, like two months later, <laughs> yeah, it's like all of them are done. Now we're just like, where could we go? We just want to go somewhere. We're like, we were just looking at maps or we're like planning places we wanted to go after all this is done. Because we just want to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm like reluctant to cancel that flight to Indiana. Because I'm like, I don't want to cancel that. And then this get lifted. And I'm going to want to jet. <laughs> like, I need to right. go. <laughs> but we've been, Gosh. me and my husband, Sam, have been um, driving around playing Pokemon Go. So we don't get out of the car so that we're not like engaging with people. Right. But we just like go downtown. And there's like nobody down there right now. So you can slowly hit like the Poke stops and do raids and so we've been doing a lot of that because it's like we get to be outside, but not like engaging with yeah. people. That's fun. That's a good idea. Yeah. Like we've, we do like take out maybe once a week. We do have to still go grocery shopping yeah. um, every so often. So we'll get like take out and then go to like Target or something like that. So we get to do that a little bit. And it's better. And like, it's like the highlight of my two weeks going to Target. Yeah, mine is going to Walmart. The other day, uh, <laughs> so some of the furniture I wanted for the cosplay layer uh, was in Walmart, and we needed groceries. And I was just like so pumped. Like, this is the best thing that's happened to me in weeks. We're yeah. going to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Yeah, I know. I'm tempted to go. Like, I always get tempted to go places, and I don't always go, obviously, but I'm just like, tempted to just put the mask on and go wherever just a little bit just so I can feel sane for a couple minutes but even I don't know even when you go in the stores like the people in there have a weird vibe about them yeah everyone's very wary of each other we were talking about the other day how like so I didn't notice I was doing it until I saw other people doing it like if you're walking past somebody in opposite directions I don't know if you've noticed this, but everyone is turning their head away from each other just on instinct, oh, it, whether you're wearing yeah. a mask or not. And I just, the other day, I really like noticed it and I was like, oh, I'm doing it too. Or like, I hold my breath. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. I hold my breath. Wow. Like, <laughs> these strange little Jeez. instincts that have just kicked in. Yeah. And like, I'll, I, I mean, I don't really like crowding aisles anyway, but like if someone's in an aisle, like I just won't go down that aisle. Yeah. No. I'll just, I'll wait. I don't know. It's really interesting. And it sucks because like, well, even like the cashiers are kind of iffy with you, like, which I understand because they have to like be around people all day long, which sucks. Yeah. So I usually, I usually try to do self checkout so I don't bother anybody or don't have to put, have them like interact with me or my stuff or things that I touched or whatever. Yeah. I, I feel bad. Like, I don't know. It's just like, I want to get out and I want to do things. But then when I, if I go into Walmart, like I feel guilty for being there. Yeah. I feel so bad for the, the people that have to work there. Like, and I know that they need income. They don't want them not be working like monetarily, but like having to actually be there. I know it's really hard. Yeah. But, yeah. Largest yeah. social experiment ever. <laughs> yep, I know. <laughs> So let's kind of dive back into the mental health aspect because that's a huge part of our experience. Yeah. I believe it's been very interesting. I think our brains are having a hard time figuring this out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. I th- but um, yeah, sorry. No, no, you're good. I was just going to say like, I like, just, this is just highlighted so many things for me that I like wasn't aware of about myself before as well. Like my mental health, like mm-hmm. it's, it just, you're, You're always with yourself more so than ever because, like, you're not as distracted by, like, going to the mall and doing stuff. Like I said, my um, focus – and I feel like this was a – like we were talking about earlier, like, my focus shifted. My mental health, like, reattached itself to my numbers, which Mm -hmm. sucks. And this did – this happened so unconsciously. And I'm always, like, you know, at panels talking, like, don't attach yourself to your numbers. You're not your numbers. And it's like, well, that's – 
easier said than done because how quick like my brain just clicked back into that and how hard that hits my mental health. I'm like, I really have to reevaluate like how much I had really separated myself from that prior. Like, was I just distracting myself with other things? Because I think it is important to really be separate from that for your mental health. It's like, it's affecting um, because I'm so focused on that. And I'm like at home all the time. It started bleeding into like my appearance, like how I look like I'm, my body dysmorphia is starting to return like it hasn't in years. Mm. And I just, I'm trying to step outside of myself instead of like letting myself get like swept up in it all. I keep like taking a minute. I'm like, okay, let's step outside of this and look at it objectively. Why have you gotten here? And that has helped level me out a lot, but my brain is just like so confused and trying to fill the gaps with all of these things that aren't positive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Um, I especially think that since the shows were such a huge part of your kind of existence in the cosplay world, yeah. it's probably extra hard just having like just a large part of that get just taken away suddenly. Yeah. And the uncertainty of it, it's just your brain just doesn't know like what, to put there yeah so it'll just put any old thing in there like the first thought that it sees it's like all right you're gonna dwell on this now (laughs) okay (laughs) now you just hate yourself get it (laughs) yeah oh gosh what about you yeah how is it affecting you so I guess at first because obviously um I'm an introvert and I recharge when I'm home alone by myself but it's made me sort of start craving interaction with people, which I never thought that would ever happen. But I guess too much time alone for me can make me a little bit like my brain just gets a little frazzled and it's like, man, you just, you got to get out. You have to see somebody like you have to like talking with a friend, like face to face can kind of ground me in a way. Like if I've been feeling weird and I chat with like you or other people, then it kind of helps me like stay grounded. So that's been kind of, it's just been a little weird, like my brain exploring those kinds of feelings for the first time. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I'm also, I was diagnosed with depression when I was in high school and it's gotten a lot better, like as a whole, like I've gotten more, I've developed like more ways to deal with it, but like, I've been having like flare ups. Like it's been like the feeling of just hopelessness and indifference has like skyrocketed in this time. So it's like, where's my motivation to do anything? Like, it's just, uh, it's not there. Like I have to force myself to wake up at a certain time. I have to like force myself. Like I've decided or not decided, but I've found that if I put on makeup, then it helps me sort of feel like I'm more put together Cause a lot of times before, like I would just wouldn't put on any makeup during the day, like, and it would be fine. But now if I don't put on makeup, I don't brush my hair and I don't like, and I stay in my pajamas all day. It just makes me feel like total garbage inside. Yeah. I feel So that. I've had to, yeah, it's, and I don't, I feel like people are just overusing the term self care these days in a way, but I feel like some things that I used to neglect before I found that I actually kind of need in order to feel a sense of security in my routine so I can feel like I have control over something in my life. (laughs) Yeah. I was the same way. I really didn't wear a whole lot of makeup at home. Like if I'm not recording or doing anything, like why? Um, But I've been putting like fake eyelashes on every day. Not even just just to sit down for 30 minutes and do my makeup and put eyelashes on and do my hair has made all of the difference. Yeah, I agree. Like, it's kind of relaxing putting it on. And I just try weird colors. Like, I put on, like, orange eyeshadow a couple of days ago just for fun. And it just makes me feel better for some reason. I don't know. It's, like, it's fleeting, though, because the feelings come back. But, like, for a little bit, like it sets a good tone for the day, I think. Yeah. When I feel put together first thing in the morning. Well, and I think you're right in what you said. Like, it gives you a sense of control and routine. Like Mm -hmm. I'm doing the thing like I'm not just because I think it would be easy, honestly, like so easy to just sit down and do nothing but play games or watch movies and just let your mental health like fall deeper and deeper into a pit. Yep. Like eat crap. Just don't 
even think about exercise and just lay on the couch all day. Yeah. Like, and some people might be able to do that and be fine, but I need, I need a sense of routine or else I'll just feel hopeless. Yep. Same though. <laughs> I won't do anything. I need to like work cosplay into that routine though. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get like the, the bare necessities ish stuff in there first. And then I don't know, I've gotten a little better. Like doing the Skyrim costume has kind of helped me think like, wow, okay. So I can do something that's crafting and feel good about it and feel like I did a good job and use my time wisely. So I think like, as this, I had, I feel like our brains just had to have like an adjustment period. I think we're all in a huge adjustment period right now. Yeah. And it's just going to take a while for us to get into the swing of this new thing that's our lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so like last year, especially towards the end of last year and kind of the beginning of this year, like I don't think I told anybody actually, um, but I was really struggling with like severe burnout in my head, but I was like purposely ignoring it. Like, no, yeah. we're going to keep going. And so I was noticing it, like, really plummet, like, my mental health and my ability to take care of myself. And like you said, I started to feel very indifferent about, like, everything I was doing, like, my motivation. And I kept, like, being like, I want a break, but I can't take a break. Because, you know, as a creator, like, that fear of taking a break. You're Yeah. And so I was just, like, trapped in this place in my head where, like, I felt like I had nowhere to go to, like, fix it. Like, I was like, I'm so burnt out that it's starting to damage me, but like, what do I do? I got to keep going. Like, you know, trying to do that. It'll be worth it in the end mentality. And then when we were in Myrtle beach and that, that was kind of like my breaking point to the end of that, like my mental health, like really started like fracturing uh, on the last day. Cause I had just done too much for too oh, long. Yeah. And so when this pandemic like hit, like cause when we were flying home, they were starting to like shut down Kansas. And so I was just like, this is like a kind of a godsend. I have to think of this as like, I've been needing a break from everything. Like I have a sense of relief and now like this time has given me a good, like a good amount of time to like really reflect on how I let myself get to that place and how uh -huh. I will be efficient still moving forward at the pace that I enjoy without letting myself get to that place again, where like I'm internally struggling at that level. Um, but now like I kind of like rectified that all in my head and then this has gone on longer than like the time I needed <laughs> to like recharge. And yeah. So now I'm moving into like a whole different, like, op like, like, like we've talked about, like now my mental health is like altering for a different reason because I'm so uncertain and everything's uncertain and my goalposts have changed. And so mm -hmm. I'm during that time, I'm just learning a lot about me a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I want, it's hard because there's probably not a lot of resources on people's brains reactions to this particular pandemic thing, but it's like, I kind of want to dig deeper into mental health as a whole. So I can learn how to get more coping mechanisms same, or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's been really interesting. Like it's some days are, have been really great. Like some days I'll even feel like this weird sense of euphoria when I'm hanging out with Casey or like doing something with him. It'll just be like this really odd, like high yeah. feeling. And I'm just like, man, this is just so great. Life is so good. Um, and we're just doing the best we can, blah, 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 blah. Like we have roof over our head, we have food, we have this and that. And then the next day it's just plummeting into like this despair. And it's just really odd like it's strange like I know I, I tend towards that anyway but um like some days will it's like up and down and then more recently it's been kind of like a steady indifference feeling like the like I've said a billion times lately to everyone I know like the movie Groundhog Day like I just feel like every day is the same yeah. <laughs> over and over again like and I said on Twitter I was like I just I'm watching my pets walk in the same paths do the exact same things every single day and it's just nuts like I just feel like I'm going crazy because everything just feels the same yeah and there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> I yeah you just exactly that's kind of what I was like trying to say earlier but couldn't find the words for and you hit the nail on the head it's almost like I was experiencing extreme highs and lows and now it's just indifference like I've yeah. worn out all of those chemicals. Like I would be super euphoric and then get super down and it would just be like every other day. And then at some point this just went on so long that it was just like that it's indifference now. 
Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would, I would hope that after all of this, or even during, I just want people to really have like, especially in our community, but like really candid discussions about how they felt. I would love to know like how many of us are having this shared experience, not even just in cosplay, um, but just like right. in society in general, like this traumatic experience. Yeah. And I know it's, uh, it's different for everybody. And I know that there's a lot of people that are going to like through more traumatic experiences than us, but I like the people that are in healthcare and like other essential workers and things like that. Like I know that is, is really hard to like, my husband has to still go into work and stuff. So I'm just, uh, I don't know. All of our feelings, I guess are pretty valid because all of our experiences are different. Yeah. Our brains all just, our brains react differently to different stimuli. So I wish there was a Facebook group we could all get into and like help each other share coping mechanisms. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would like to know like other people's because do you have anything that, that you do that kind of helps you? Like, I know we talked about makeup and how that's like a good kind of grounding activity, but is there anything else that you found yourself doing just like for comfort or like a sense of relief from this? Um, I think like, so one of the things I've been doing is just spending a bit more time outside that has helped a yes. lot. Um, even trying to take my work outside with me when I do have to work, do work. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, it's been like like Pokemon hunting. So like uh, <laughs> the Starbucks on Rock Road opens for a few hours a day and they have like all PPE, mm-hmm. the way they hand it over. They have everything like top tier. And so um, if I have time during that time frame, me and Sam will just head over there, grab a coffee, we'll have our masks on. And then we'll just drive around and catch some Pokemon and I will open up any other apps on my phone. I won't think about cosplay or, uh, you know, esports, any of that stuff. I'm just focused on in that moment, like that, you know, basically doing nothing but playing a frivolous game. And that has helped a lot. Like that's become something that we're doing for like an hour nearly every day now. Because mm-hmm. like being in this house, like it, so for those who don't know, my husband is also a natural introvert. Like he could live in the house forever and just play games. Like that's his happy place, his safe place. Um, I'm the polar opposite. So he's been like taking me out for like <laughs> Pokemon dates. <laughs> it's like, let's get Sophie out of the house, like a little plant. We need to get her some air. <laughs> um, so that has been helpful for sure. Although I think that's starting to uh, um, look the the euphoric effects of that are starting to wear away a bit you know because it's becoming yeah. part of our routine and so now I'm like I need to find something else that we can do or that I can do that like breaks it up and it's like oh cool this is new maybe it's animal crossing maybe I just need to get animal crossing yeah I think that's that's the solution <laughs> yeah. to everything <laughs> I think so too <laughs> oh my gosh um it's interesting what you say about the uh like the Pokemon becoming like routine because Casey and I, in the beginning of March, I guess, we started playing Far Cry 5 together. Yeah. And that's a really, really fun game. And it was a little bit before all this stuff happened, I guess, maybe. I don't even remember. I don't know timelines anymore. But um, it wasn't as serious as it is now. But we started playing it, and it was really, really fun. Like, I I was really surprised. I wasn't – I thought I would like it, but I was surprised at how much I really liked the game. Yeah. Um, especially playing it with Casey. Like we have, for those of you who don't know, we have a basement, um, a finished basement, and we've got um, an L-shaped couch, an uppercase L-shaped couch. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Uppercase, I love it. My favorite, so this is a sidebar, my favorite joke in the entire universe comes from Dimitri Martin, and it goes, I have an L-shaped couch, lowercase. (laughs) Lowercase. I love Dimitri Martin, sidebar. (laughs) He's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So any anytime that I can slide that in there, I do. So you're welcome. <laughs> but um, so yeah, on one end of the couch, we have my spot and I face a TV on the opposite wall. And then on the, the other end of the couch, we have Casey's spot and he faces a TV on the other side. So we have like two TVs and like our both of our spots on there. So I look at my screen, he looks at his screen, we can play over the internet and we it's like a an online co-op basically so it's not like online multiplayer it's just us but we have to connect online and it's been really fun so that was a really long way to get to my entire point which was <laughs> I loved it that was a journey 
Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We've been playing that and it's, it was like one of those experiences where it was like super like euphoric and stuff playing it. Like, I'm just like, wow, this is so fun. Um, it's nice that we get to do this. And then um, we finished it like last week or so, but I could kind of tell that Casey was sort of getting tired of it. And um, so we kind of took a break from playing it because we played on his account. So like my my game didn't progress. Like I was playing in his game. So he we beat the game, but on his account. Oh. And I'm like, ooh, let's go play on my account. And like we'll have all of our good guns, but we'll have like like as you progress in the game, you have less and less bad guys like like driving around or whatever. And so I was like, oh, we'll have and like plenty of people to shoot at and stuff. And um, but we'd been playing it for a while, so he kind of wanted to take a break and do other things. But um, like I found myself sort of craving the the feeling that playing that gave me when we first started playing it. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I'm just like, man, I want, I just want to play Far Cry again. And but it's like, I want to play play that but have that feeling that's attached to it. Yeah. So it's like you're just you crave like that sort of feeling from things that you do. And you kind of attach that feeling to certain things. I don't know if anything I'm saying is making sense. No, I I think I know what you mean. (laughs) It's like you get these like kind of like euphoric or just happy, pleasant, comfortable feelings from things. And you're like, this is good. This is a this is a good experience or moment in my right. life. And then over time, uh, you do it more and that fizzles a bit because you get used to yeah. it. Yeah, it just, it sucks because I wish that that didn't happen. Like I get annoyed at when I get tired of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. Because I, I tend to get yeah. tired of things pretty quickly. I get excited yeah. for the next thing, which is why like mm. convention hopping worked well for me because like I'm done, I'm ready for the next one. Let's rock. Like that worked well for like, the way yeah. I operate. And so, yeah, now it's like, I get tired of things so quickly and it's like, gotta search for the, that's kind of why I haven't bought Animal Crossing because I feel like if I spend $60 on this game, what if I like, I'm in love with it for four days and then I never touch it again? <laughs> I think, I don't know. I can't, well, cause my brain is kind of, I have kind of like a longer attention span, I guess. Like yeah. Casey's kind of like you and he needs like um, a lot of excitement, I guess, in order to keep his interest up. Yep. But whereas I can play this, I've played Skyrim since 2011. <laughs> yes <laughs> so i don't know um i think i think you would like it a lot of people i know have been playing it playing animal crossing since it came out so and there's they're always doing like new activities in the game like within the game like there's different events that go on where you have to do special things and you're unlocking new features and things like that i want to be a part so, of the turnip sales i see you guys in chat looking for a good price of turnips and i want to be a part oh of my that. gosh <laughs> like, uh, the turnip the turnip prices are are legit <laughs> like, see i i want to be a part of that <laughs> i also get um, should. what's it called uh when fear of missing out what is fear yes. of fomo i got yeah. fomo <laughs> well you could totally fix that oh i could i could download it right yeah. now <laughs> goodness yeah. i think i like sidestepped like my, my methods of um dealing with all of this stuff when i was like doing that whole rant <laughs> but um besides like animal crossing and makeup doing my hair has been something that i like doing like i'll actually like curl it like i'll curl my hair every day oh, or whatever yeah. i'm trying to think of other things i don't know well on easter we couldn't really go out or whatever so i put on the outfit that i was going to wear if we were able to go out and take pictures in that so that's another thing trying to think see and i miss doing photo shoots sorry to interject i just i miss them but i also don't have the like i don't have the motivation to go and do one (laughs) yeah i know like i've been wanting to shoot my i have that um human caduceus costume or outfit from critical role yeah. And I've been really wanting to shoot that. Like, well, my original idea was I wanted to shoot it with the apple blossoms in our yard because our apple trees last year bloomed like crazy. Um, but this year we got late frosts and it made the flowers all brown. So, no. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, I can't do that. So now I'm looking, I found a spot behind the house that's like super green and has like these ferns and stuff. So I might do it back there. But uh, I don't know. I think just finding ways to fill my my brain with other things that are not this like for a while like not so much anymore because i'm used to it and it's there's not as much unknown about like the virus itself and the spread and stuff like i was for a while so worried about it 
Yeah. I was just like terrified of the entire thing. Like I didn't want like like I wanted Casey to just wash his hands every time he touched anything yep. and wipe down your car every time you touch something or whatever. And like you should you should keep it everything as clean as possible. But I like the the fear that was attached to it isn't really there anymore. It's just now it's just like, all right, you gotta gotta wipe things down. <laughs> it's just how you do it. It's what you do now. Yeah, you've just gotten used to it. I feel that too. Yeah. So I think I still kind of like to like I like to know what's going on, but I don't want to dwell on the news, especially because there's so much literal insanity coming from certain people that are talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I just can't believe some of the stuff that's going on, and so I have to distance myself from that and from people talking about it. Like I think I'm gonna have to mute some words for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Please and, don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Like not mention like not look at Facebook because there's just so much like garbage that's going around and like so much clickbait that's like not even true that's going around and yeah I think distancing myself from all of that helps me to like pretend that things are normal even though I know that they're not normal yeah no I agree I Uh, was really sucked into the news for a while and then I was like this is not helping yeah I mean talking to talking to friends has been a good like distraction like my two best friends that I grew up with um, Emily and Sarah, they and I have a group chat, like a group text chat. Yeah. That we, um, every couple of days, we'll kind of check in on each other and be like, oh, okay, what's, and for a while we were doing a thing where it was like, okay, name like one good thing that happened today or one thing that made you happy today. And doing that kind of helps just kind of focus on the good things. And also it's nice it kind of brings us closer together because we're, I don't know, going through the same thing, even though we're all in different states now. It's just really nice to be able to have chats with people like that. To like reconnect through this. The yeah. silver lining of this for sure. I agree. Definitely been chatting with you guys a lot. And then like my other, like I have a couple group chats that I've been just going crazy on. Like I know I, pr- I should probably be doing something productive, but, <laughs> but if that's chatting with people helps yeah if that's good for your mental health and that's what you should be allowed to do you know yeah that should be yeah primary that's me too i'm mm-hmm. always like um unless i'm like working and trying to focus on something i'm on messenger like my phone sent me an alert the other day and was like you spend an average of 10 hours a day on like social media or like on your phone and i was like <laughs> oh my gosh no no <laughs> like, mine does that too it's like it's always like between seven and nine hours or something like that but i also watch youtube on like i'll have a youtube video or a podcast or an audiobook going on my phone at all times so the screen time would be high see i never thought and about the- that i do that too yeah so it's not as bad as you think <laughs> <laughs> just scrolling for 10 hours right. every day <laughs> yeah yeah i guess doing a doing a workout routine has also helped a bit um sometimes i'll clean the house sometimes i don't <laughs> <laughs> sometimes no <nope. laughs> it just depends but i think it's just different for everybody everyone deals with it differently yeah um i've been trying to run on my treadmill more um mm-hmm. just spend some like you said like release those healthy endorphins yeah endorphins that's good but that's why like i was going to talk about being outside because um when it's nice out i can I definitely need to be outside a bit. I need to soak up the sun, get some of that serotonin production going. <laughs> yes, me too, though. I miss, I, I, I'm afraid we're going to lose our summer. Like, that's one of my fears is like, I, even if not gathering for conventions, like just not being able to like do outdoor summery things with friends. Like, that's a fear yeah. also. I know, that'll be really sad. Um, so I guess this brings us to like the overall sort of vibe of when you think things are going to be back to normal or if they will ever be back to normal. (laughs) Like, do you think that, do you think that cons will change in a drastic way when they do start coming back? Um, you know, I don't really know. I think that, I think that we'll see more people wearing masks. I think that's something in our culture that's just going to change entirely. And maybe people giving each other more space, but I kind of think that especially like, I mean, obviously everywhere is different, but like, here in Kansas, like people just aren't taking it super serious anyway. Um, it appears. And those who like are quarantining themselves are all getting super antsy. So I just feel like when a lot of these cons do kick off again, people are going to rush to them. They're going to be extra full. One of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to rush to them and they'll be extra full and people will be spending a ton of money because they've been bored for so long, or people will be afraid to attend them. 
And I think it could kind of like go either way. Like I'm a little concerned for cons this year that are going to go like in case it goes the the way where people are like, no, I'm going to avoid just in case. Um, like there's some smaller shows that could really get wrecked from that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of hard yeah. to like gauge. What do you think? I kind of thought the same thing. Like it's, I've heard both like mindsets. Like some people are like, it's stupid to go to any cons this year. And then there's people that are like, I can't wait to go to a con like later this year so I can get out of my house. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel like my mindset is kind of in the middle. So it's, you're, I feel like people are going to be more careful in a way. Like I think some people are going to be more careful and then others are just going to go nuts. Like you're going to get like it'll boat. probably. Yeah. That's what I think. Um, obviously it's just a prediction. It may not happen, <laughs> we, though, but these shows that know. are postponing like planet, for instance, is, in August now and Dragon Con recently announced that they'll still be in September. Like I know people are concerned, but like things change so quickly every day. Like yeah. for all we know two weeks from now, this could genuinely all start dying off, which is that would be awesome. And seeing people attack shows is really getting on my nerves. <laughs> like, yeah, you like, Oh, these are people that run the shows that you love, like human beings like you who are also quarantined. And on top of being like quarantined and dealing with all the mental health issues we've talked about come from that. Now you're making it worse. They're stressed about rescheduling the show or trying to kick the show off. And now you're adding on to it like death threats and hate mail and like, what the hell, man? Death threats are just the stupidest. Like, honestly, what kind of person do you have to be to do that to somebody? You want to look cool online. Look how hard I am. I'm yeah, I'm bad. so edgy. <laughs> I'm edgy. I told this person to die. No, yeah. you're just a mean human being. Yeah. It's like, no, you're like a 12-year-old playing Call of Duty, okay? Yeah, man. <laughs> yes. Go kill yourself. Go kill yourself. What is wrong with you? Ugh. But these, we just so need to remember, the conventions are going to keep people's best interests in mind. I don't think it was unreasonable for Planet to move to August because hopefully – things will be getting back up and running before then. But if they're not, of course they'll have to cancel. Like it's like Dragon Con, like they're in September. They're proceeding as normal because hopefully right. by then things will be chill. If they're not, of course they'll cancel. Like they'll have to Yeah. I think the I think the main thing a lot of people are just concerned about is like the not knowing. Yeah. But to blame that on the conventions, like it's not like the convention doesn't know either. Like it's not like they're holding out and not telling you that they're going to cancel last minute or whatever. Like they want to, they want to hold out as long as possible. So they have a chance to put the show on and like not lose a bunch of money. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. What well, am I like, I always use Yeti con as an example. Cause like uh, about four weeks ago, they did a post where they're like, Hey guys, all's good here. As far as we know right now, things will proceed as normal. And then last week they were like, Hey, things have changed. We're canceling until 2020. Like, that's what these shows will do. And I think that a lot of people are, you know, dealing with the mental health issues of being quarantined. And so they're maybe inadvertently, maybe they don't realize how mean they sound, but they're like taking it out on these conventions. Yeah. Like I always, I always think that taking your emotions out on somebody else is super unfair thing to do. Like, I'm not saying that I've never done it to somebody, to people that I know, but like, it's just, it's unfair to treat people that way. And I know like, I think it is what you're saying. They're like, they're bored. They have nothing else to do. So they just get antsy. Yeah. And yeah, I, I definitely think there's a mental health aspect to that. But we have to remember there are people on the other side of the convention pages running those pages that also have mental health they need to watch. Yeah, and I don't think any com would uh, on purpose put like people in danger just to make a buck. Like, right. I don't think I don't think happen. so. Unless the owner is a genuine piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> and then that con needs to be then canceled. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess when conventions do end up coming back, do you think that people are going to be more concerned about cleanliness and and stuff there? Like, do you think people will finally keep themselves clean at conventions? <laughs> <laughs> finally, you know, I do think. Like, I know for me, like I've been like brainstorming. Like, yeah, like when August we get to go to Planet, hopefully, I've, I'm taking hand sanitizer with me. I'm taking hand wipes because, like. You just you're taking photos with people, but then you're standing so close. So it's like I know, <laughs> like, and, I, and people want to touch you and stuff. And now I'm just like, I don't know if I want like people touching me. Uh, I don't know. But that is a 
solid and valid excuse when people are like, hey, you want to come around the table and like give me a hug or something? I mean, you can say no anyway, but now you can be like, oh, you know, with the current climate of things, I'm just not comfortable doing that. Right. Like it it is, it does suck because I know people really value like they want to get like selfies with you or whatever, but when your mouth is so close to their mouth, (laughs) like, like, (laughs) oh. The germs can have a party. I, <laughs> or I guess the uh, the viruses. Sorry, not the germs. Whatever. The, the thing can have a party. Whatever the things may be. Yeah. All these these little organisms oh, are up to no good. Up to no good. <laughs> I do. I think we'll also probably see um, when they do resume, like especially cosplay guests who do have to engage with a lot of people. I think we're going to see them making costumes that like with characters that already have some kind of facial covering. I think we will mm. see more of that because I have been looking at that. Like I've been looking at characters to like add to my list and, you know, some of them, like, I can't remember her name now, I'm drawing a blank, but Mortal Kombat, and she has, like, the covering over her face. Oh, there's a couple of them. Uh, Katana, yes. Melina, and Jade. Katana, Melina. So I was kind of looking at those, because those are on my, like, long-term list. I don't know if it's something I will make this year, but part of me was like, that might be a good idea yeah. for when conventions. So I think we will see more of that. Maybe I could wear my Dark Brotherhood armor, or the Shrouded armor from Skyrim, and do the little, little mouth covering on it. Yeah! That would be... That would work. No one would really care about the costume because that one doesn't do well at cons, but oh well. <laughs> but you'd be safe. <laughs> I'll be safe. <laughs> yeah. And I think, what do you think about virtual cons? Do you think they will continue? Uh, I guess it depends. Like, I think if the numbers continue to go down, maybe not. But I think that maybe a couple of them will stick around. Like, if they do have good luck uh, keeping attendance high in their little, in their events, depending how many they do, how, mon- how much they promote them, and how seamlessly they can execute them yeah i think i could see either something like that happening a couple times a year maybe and just do kind of like a uh like a weekend of streamers or something that are doing a particular subject or maybe i could see companies doing like a weekly thing where they have people on for a certain amount of time talking about something like i could see like something stemming from that that is similar yeah i don't know if there will i don't think there will be as many of them as there are now Mm -mm. i think a couple might stick around though yeah i agree because i do think it's a really good um so people who obviously like there's a lot of people who would love to go to more conventions but they just don't have the funds or the time off work it's just not um doable for them and i think that like virtual cons that do continue we'll see a lot of pop there of people who are like oh so i can enter a costume contest and i can shop a, a virtual vendor hall and i can watch these cool panels from my home i don't have to spend any money because most of the cons aren't charging people to like quote unquote enter that's good so and i see i could see it helping people that maybe can't get to a convention like if they don't have one in their area or if they have you know difficulties getting around maybe they can't walk very well and they can't get to the convention very easily or if they get tired very easily can't walk around for long distances it would be very it would be nice for them to still be able to participate and enter a contest or participate in a panel without worrying if the convention is going to be accessible for them yeah so i think that's really nice and i just crossed my mind i've never i haven't even looked into this i don't know if you had but the U.S. probably is not the only country doing virtual conventions, and I haven't even thought about being able to like check out like virtual conventions in like Europe and Asia, South America. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they're doing similar things too. Yeah, I haven't seen any like promotions about them or anything, but it'd be cool to look into that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at that now. That's really interesting. I'm trying to compile a list of all of the uh, like upcoming cosplay contests for the community on the cost ladies. Um, but I'm yeah. really struggling to find them. I know they're out there, but it, like finding virtual conventions has been very difficult. Yeah, I wish that there were like a hashtag that they use. Yeah, like they could all use the same hashtag or something like that. Because it'd be kind of fun to enter in some of those. Like maybe I mean I haven't. I don't know if they have rules where you have to have made your costume within the quarantine or what. But I I guess I'll have to read up. I entered the NakaCon one, um, mm-hmm. and. That was pretty much just, it appeared to be, for the most part, like, business as usual on there. And okay, so, like, virtual. But, like, I'm intrigued because, like, their contests are very high caliber. Um, but yeah. without them having the ability to, like, walk up to me and check my seams and really, like, for not just me, but any of the contestants. Because, obviously, you said, like, progress. But it's not the same as being able to touch and view the costume. So, like, yeah. how will that skew results? Right. And you can, like, seriously Photoshop a bad costume into a decent costume yeah. honestly and that's like, my- i don't know how many times like 
I've deleted, or not deleted, I've like removed weird wrinkles in my fabric that didn't look right or whatever. Yes. Like I don't I don't alter the costume like to where it's unrecognizable, but like of course I want to make it look as seamless as possible. And if I I don't want to like leave thread tails hanging around, you know? Yeah. My uh <laughs> cyberpunk catwoman, like when we were shooting that, one of my seams wasn't strong enough and it like ripped a little bit on the leg. Uh, oh, no. and that was something that we just photoshopped out for the online photos like I because fi- I was like I, I fix that when I get home and I, I did but you're right so correct like even if that was like all of my seams were trash I could fix those in photoshop and then enter a contest and is that fair right like that's it's uh I don't know it's it's a little if I'm sure that's something that they'll have to figure out I guess as they go along because since it's so new yeah but it's definitely something to think about like I wonder if like they could do like a prejudge thing where you send in a little video where you have to show certain aspects of the costume. Like you have to show underneath the seam, you have to show like a close up of this, these certain areas or something like that. Yeah. Or like you have to, like they'll have a way to tell whether the photo is edited or not. Just have like a raw photo. That's it's or something. certainly interesting times we are living in at this point. Definitely. It's just, it's, it's like almost funny that we're even talking about things like that. Yeah. All I'm saying is in January, I got back from Mexico and I was reading, I love politics in the news, like world news. And I was reading all of what was going on in China. And I went and grabbed, um, I had my husband's dad grab us uh, some masks because he has a bunch of masks. He works at the hospital and they have some in their home that he has brought home before when uh, the stepmom was like had surgery and just personal stuff. And so he gave us some of those and I bought goggles off Amazon because I remember reading about how it was getting into the doctor's eyes. And I just remember so many people around me being like, you're so silly. Like, this is ridiculous. You're wasting my, why are you doing this? You're crazy. And so when things kind of started kicking off here, a little part of me was like, was I crazy? It was crazy now. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) crazy now. I got my mask. (laughs) Right. So I, yeah. but even when I was like buying those things in January, like I, I knew I was being a little, or I thought in my mind even that I was being a little silly and doomsday prepper, but I was like, whatever, worst case scenario, we just never use any of it. But then when it all kicked off, I was like, oh, see? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're glad you have it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And those other people are all protesting in the street. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need my haircut. You're fine. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say Karen, but you're not allowed to say that anymore. Oh, right. (laughs) Don't be a COVID Karen. Don't be a COVID Karen. (laughs) (laughs) It's my new slogan. COVID Karen. All the the Karens can be mad at me. I don't care. It's fine. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Be mad about it. Uh, I'm a millennial, so they probably talk crap about me, too. (laughs) Yep. Oh, man. I feel like... We covered a lot of things today. <laughs> I do too. Uh, and it's been nice to have human interaction with you. I know. Ugh. Let's see how long it lasts before I, I crave it again. Yeah. We'll have to <laughs> I hope I have to do some like <laughs> FaceTime chats or something. I hope I've like filled your gauge a little bit, you know? Like Yeah, I think I think you have. <laughs> now I just need I just need to go outside and I can't today because it's raining. So I guess we'll wait for warm weather. Just stand <laughs> at your screen door and breathe in deeply. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Fresh storm. I mean, when it when it stops raining, I could probably go outside because it'll smell good. Oh, yes. I, I do. I am enjoying the rain, even though I'm indoors. Like, I'm enjoying the calmness of it. Yeah. it's It was nice last like night. It. it was kind of, we opened the window a little bit so we could hear it. Like, yes. hear the sound of the rain. I'm just like, oh, wow, I can actually sleep, <laughs> which is a whole other thing. It's the sleep struggle during all this is really exciting. I, I saw that trending on Twitter. <laughs> Apparently that's something we're all experiencing. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I've been utilizing some methods to make myself fall asleep, but uh, I don't know. Falling asleep naturally just isn't really, I feel like it's been a struggle. <laughs> yeah. It's that mess up of schedule. I really feel like that's what it is that our brains, like you said, are just like, what's happening? So yeah. the chemicals are getting a little unbalanced up there, I feel like. Yeah. Hopefully we'll all figure it out. <laughs> I hope at the end of all of this that people just, we come out of this kinder and everyone's a little frustrated online right now. So things are a little wild, but I'm hoping that's just like a thing that's happening right now. And that when all this is over and we can go back to conventions together, that our community is just so happy to see each other that a lot of like the silly BS that goes on dies down at least for a while that people are just happy to have this community and be able to return to it. Yep. I agree. I think 
I do think it'll be like some of a euphoric experience at first Mm -hmm. because everyone will just be just on this super high of seeing everybody again and being able to go outside around in the public (laughs) yeah without worrying about stuff like I think people will be cautious but I think I think people will it'll be happy happiness mixed with caution (laughs) yeah I agree (laughs) it'll be another adjustment probably I'd rather I'd rather be adjusting to that than adjusting to this (laughs) yeah me too I'm looking forward Mm. to that adjustment well, I guess that about does it for this episode of Hot Glue and Bobby Pins. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Feel free to follow us on social media. Search April Gloria on all platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I'm on Vero now again. Yay! Um, yeah. So Patreon, OnlyFans. I have a Gumroad store for digital downloads. I have a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things. I have <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, oh my Sophie, two eyes, no E. Remember, it's a sin to use the E. Yep, mortal sin. Mortal sin. And then OnlyFans <laughs> and Patreon. OnlyFans is mostly the sussier stuff, whereas Patreon has a lot of like that, plus also all my cosplay builds and build blogs and tutorials. And then um YouTube and Twitch. I would love some support on there because I'm really trying to grow those platforms. Same. Except for Twitch. I don't do Twitch anymore, but YouTube, yes. Oh, I figured out how to, like, uh, I found a program where we could split screen on Twitch. So if you ever want to do one with me. Oh, I would love to. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'm down. Okay, dope. Totally down. But yeah, also uh, be sure to give us a five-star rating where if you listen, um, but only if, only review us if you're going to give us five stars because anything <laughs> below that is extremely, it's extremely hurtful and we don't want it. Yeah. Don't, like, <laughs> we're very sensitive right now please be nice to us yeah this is a difficult time so please respect that (laughs) with your five star rating (laughs) so anyway hopefully you guys have a great week thanks for hanging out with us um stay safe social distance if you can wear your masks and please wash your hands i echo this please wash your hands sing happy birthday to yourself every day is your birthday (laughs) yep that's your gift to yourself every day (laughs) All right. Uh, Bye, friends. See you later. Bye.